What's going on, Jeron Mob? It's your Don Jeron Mon back at it again with another episode, another season of NBA Kicks, the show where we count down the top 10 best sneakers in the NBA every single week. Now, to start off opening week, we're doing a special top 15 episode. So you guys already know, we got a ton of great kicks in today's video. But before we get started, I have a couple of really exciting announcements. First of all, I'm going to be live on the official NBA Twitch page every single Friday at about 5.30 to 5.45 p.m. Eastern time. You guys already know the NBA is celebrating their 75th season with a top 75 players team. And every Friday, I'm going to be re-watching a hardwood classic from one of those top 75 players. So it's a lot of fun. The nostalgia is through the roof. So if you haven't come through already, make sure you hit the NBA Twitch page with the link down below. Make sure you got all those notifications set up so you don't miss the stream. Make sure the Jerron mob runs heavy in the next one. And second, new episodes of NBA Kicks will be going live before the streams on Friday. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring that bell so you never miss an episode. But now that we got all the house cleaning out of the way, I know you guys can't wait to see what the fellas have in store for us in terms of their kicks. So sit back, relax, grab a snack, and check out this new intro. Kicking us off at number 15, we have Anthony Davis with a new colorway of the Nike Kobe 6 Pro Tro. So last year, the Kobe 5 was hands down the most popular sneaker across the league. I mean, we saw a ton of colorways, including player exclusive ones that fans like you and I never even had a chance to cop at retail. And I fully expect Nike to give the same treatment to the 6s this season like we see here with Anthony Davis. This colorway uses a bright orange, some would say mango upper alongside a teal swoosh and Kobe logo on the tongue for a pretty solid colorway that gives me some serious Miami Dolphin vibes, but how it relates to AD, the Lakers, or Kobe, I really have no clue, but I know both you and I would definitely not mind having these in our collection, so I just had to put them on the list. Oh, and AD, um... Your socks are looking rank, my guy. Maybe you get the equipment manager to get you some fresh whites on your feet. I mean, I'm just saying, pretty gross. Next up at number 14, we have Miles Turner with a pair of custom Kobe 5s. Miles Turner decides to stick with the Kobe 5s to start the season with this custom colorway that has what I'm assuming is the Indianapolis skyline. I could be wrong on that, as well as a cutout picture of him reaching for the stars or star. Overall, the custom work on this colorway is well done, and I love the fact that it still uses that classic pacer yellow and navy color scheme, but what would be crazy is if Miles Turner blocked a shot like he is on his shoes while wearing these shoes. That would be like sneaker inception. Next up at number 13, we have Zion Williamson with a custom pair of Air Force Ones. All right, so Zion is out with an injury, but technically he did wear these on the court. But the real reason why I put these on this list is because I just love that Zion is coming with that Air Force energy. And also, I don't want all those Naruto fans coming at me for leaving them off the list. But in all honesty, this is just an awesome sneaker. Now, Zion didn't just rock a Naruto-inspired pair of kicks, but his entire fit was inspired by the popular anime, which definitely made me feel old, but at the same time, you gotta respect the fit. I mean, white on white with a black vest, that's tough to pull off, but Zion gets the job done with all that Naruto artwork that I'm sure fans of the series are absolutely going to love. Coming in at number 12, we have Kevin Durant with the Nike KD-14. Now, we all know that Nike and KD dropped a dream colorway of the 14s, which were inspired by Kyrie Irving's first signature sneaker, the Dream Kyrie one. But the pair that KD is rocking here is a little bit different from the one that Nike and KD dropped. As you can see here, the pair that KD rocked against his hometown team uses a more vibrant color scheme with a more colorful upper, volt hits on the tongue and inner lining, as well as a sweet gradient midsole and translucent wrap, which offer a very unique look. 
Personally, I think the original Dream colorway is just a tad bit cleaner since it does use a little more black, but it's still cool that Nike is using a KD silhouette inspired by one of KD's teammates. So let me know which colorway you like better in the comment section below, the original Dreams or these new ones. Next up at number 11, we got DeMar DeRozan with another pair of Kobe 6 Pro Tros. Now, like I said earlier, we're going to see a ton of Kobe 6s on the court this season, especially from guys who are known for wearing Kobe's on the court, such as LA native, but now Chicago Bull, DeMar DeRozan. This colorway uses a classic Black Mamba scaled upper with a gray swoosh, which is banked by a gradient red and blue color scheme that definitely could have been executed a little better, but nonetheless, it's a pair of sixes, so you know I'm going to be all on them. However, I would like to see Nike hook DeMar up with just some simple black and red colorways to match his new Chicago threads. But what we got here will work for now, but I just know Nike can do better. So Nike, don't let me down. Don't overthink it. Red, black, maybe a little bit of white and forget about it. Next up at number 10, we have Isaiah Stewart with a simple yet fire custom of the Puma RS Dreamer. All right, so here we got Isaiah Stewart of the Pistons rocking a very simple colorway of the original J. Cole silhouette from Puma. However, I'm a strong believer in less is more, and these are a perfect example of that. Using a basic blue, black, silver, and gold color scheme, this custom's defining feature besides the excellent color blocking are the flames on the lateral midsole, which contracts perfectly with that blue upper, as well as the beef stew tag on the medial side, which I'm assuming is Stewart's nickname, which is pretty funny. Overall, this custom may not be the most unique or creative, but I think it's a clean colorway that fits right in with Puma's aesthetics and really feels like something that they would drop as an official colorway, minus of course that personalized tag on the inside of the midsole. Next up at number 9, we have Damian Lee with a custom colorway of the Curry 8. Now, despite the Curry 9 already being officially unveiled, Steph's teammate and stepbrother is still rocking the Curry 8, but at least he came correct with a custom colorway. This custom uses a basic Warriors blue and gold color scheme, but is elevated with an icy mountain graphic on the lateral upper, which looks so real that it feels like Bob Ross painted them himself. All right, now we're just gonna use this nice ice white to make these happy little mountains right here just like that isn't that nice now no <laughs> but for real it's pretty impressive that artwork of this quality can be put on such a difficult canvas to work with such as sneakers i mean that's some pretty high quality custom work there but i am a little bit confused as to the quote that damien put on the forefoot which reads our mountains are our mountains i don't know what that means but i, I don't know what that means Next up at number 8, we have Enos Cantor with a controversial custom of the Air Jordan 11 Low. Alright, so Enos Cantor has been no stranger to adversity in his life. If you're not familiar, his home country of Turkey has basically disowned him and has gone as far as issuing a warrant for his arrest, accusing him of being a member of a terror group, all because Cantor was critical of the then Turkish president who was at the middle of a corruption scandal at the time. Yeah, pretty crazy, but Cantor has always stood his ground and never backed down from what he believes is right, and this time he's using his sneakers to get his message across. Using the Columbia or Legend Blue colorway as its base, this custom has blood splatter across the entire upper with the words such as slave labor and hypocrite, which is a direct shot at Nike. Now technically these are a Jordan brand shoe, but Cantor's message is loud and clear. Enos is accusing Nike of using labor camps in China to produce their products. While this is a very sensitive topic that I personally don't have all the information on, it is a conversation that we need to have and can't ignore. So hopefully, Cantor and his sneakers will force Nike to comment on this situation instead of staying silent, proving to us that our voices as well as Cantor's are being heard. But seriously, huge shout out to Cantor for standing up and what he believes is right. And I also want to give a huge shout out to the NBA for actually allowing Cantor to wear these on the court, even though they're major business partners with Nike. Like they could have easily told them that this was too graphic. You can't wear these. It is infringes on all types of things, but they didn't. They let Cantor wear it. So we got to give props where props is due. 
Next up at number seven, we have Donovan Mitchell with a new colorway of the Don issue number three. Adidas and Donovan Mitchell are no stranger when it comes to collaborations. We all know Mitchell is a huge Spider-Man fan like myself, so we've already seen a Venom and Carnage colorway of his latest signature sneaker, but this time Adidas laces Donovan up with a Lego inspired colorway. Using a very playful color scheme which is littered with primary colors, including that vibrant yellow on the upper, this colorway also features a Lego logo on the back of the heel, while the tongue is graced with a Lego-fied Donovan Mitchell, which can also be seen printed on the overlay. You can really tell Adidas went all out with this collab, and while they haven't officially announced these, it is cool to see that not even Mitchell himself could contain his excitement as he laced these up during his game against the Kings, but what I'm wondering is, will these come with like an instruction pamphlet like Legos do on how to lace these up and put them on? I mean, that would actually be kind of dope. Coming in at number six, we have Tobias Harris with another colorway of Kobe 6 Pro Tros. So here we have the third Kobe 6 Pro Tro on this week's list. But before you complain and say that there's too many Kobe's on this list, I dare you to look at me in the eye and say that you want to cop these if you had a chance. Using a beautiful gradient upper that goes from light green to a grayish blue, this colorway is rounded out with white hits, a milky outsole, and is topped off with a red inner lining, making for an overall awesome colorway that I just know I would take an L on if these were to drop on the sneakers app. This is an awesome colorway, and I'm actually kind of getting a little ticked off now because I'm coming to the realization that I'm probably never going to be able to pick up a pair of sixes because they're so in demand. I am having a very bad day. Next up at number five, we have James Harden with a custom colorway of the Harden Volume 6 from Adidas. Now, if you're new to the show, we have a rule on NBA Kicks that if you debut your own signature sneaker, you are guaranteed the number one spot. However, you probably already noticed that we're only at number five, and that's because we had five signature sneaker debuts during opening week, and the Hardens, well, they were just my least favorite of the five. Using a very similar visual design to its predecessor, the Harden Volume 6 is still intriguing visually. However, it looks like they will perform about the same as the 5s, which weren't very popular due to their stiff ride. Nonetheless, shoe customizer Cy Rado comes through with a very fun custom, which has a ton of things going on, including a retro Adidas logo, palm trees, flames, as well as a dirt bike graphic that uses the overlay on the midfoot in its design, which is some very high level custom work. I do wish that the colors did pop a little bit more, but at the end of the day, it's a unique custom, it's a signature sneaker debut, and now it's the fifth best sneaker worn in the NBA from last week. Next up at number four, we have LeBron James with the debut of the Nike LeBron 19. Holy crap, guys, we are on the LeBron 19. I mean, just think about that, 19 sneakers. I mean. Do you guys even own 19 pairs of sneakers? That is absolutely crazy. And even though reaching 19 silhouettes is a feat that we should not take lightly, the LeBron 19 honestly isn't getting me as excited as I thought they would. Right off the bat, the visual design of these is somewhat of a throwback with a really high collar and shape that reminds me a lot of the Nike basketball silhouettes from the late 2000s, such as the original Hyperdunks. But obviously, the 19s use updated materials and tech, such as a VaporMax looking cushioning system, which does seem to be decoupled, which if it is, that does have me really excited. But aside from that, there just isn't too much that I'm looking forward to here. These kind of look like they're inspired by the older LeBron silhouettes, which were just too powerful and too bulky for me. But I am excited to see Nike hook LeBron up with a Lakers inspired colorway, but why did they add red on the inner lining and the pull tab? Like seriously, that ruins the rest of the colorway. I mean, the Lakers are purple and gold, Nike, not purple, gold, and red. Why? Next up at number three, we have Gordon Hayward with the debut of the Anta GH3. In case you didn't know, Gordon Hayward has a signature sneaker line with Chinese sportswear brand Anta, the same brand that sponsors Klay Thompson, and here he debuts his third signature sneaker, which might just be his best one yet. 
Hayward rocks this crazy zebra-like colorway with a very busy black and white graphic on the upper, which is something that we've seen Anta use on Hayward sneaker before, but this time they're complemented with a hint of crimson instead of teal, which doesn't go quite as well with those Hornets unis, but on their own do look pretty sick. Now I know it's kind of hard to tell exactly what the GH3 looks like from this colorway, so here's a look at a more simple black colorway, which is a better showcase to the GH3's design, which features a strap system that might provide some performance benefit, and also has a very unique logo placement with the Anta logo on the fin-like heel cup, which I think is super unique. Honestly, Anta has been killing it with their logo placements in a lot of their recent silhouettes, especially their colorways. I mean, this black and white GH3, I mean, you guys know I love my black and white sneakers, so I'm all about these. So even though Anta doesn't have a huge presence outside of China, I'm still excited to see what they have in store for both Clay and Gordon Hayward this season. Coming in as our runner up, we have LaMelo Ball with the debut of the Puma MB01. Now, in case you missed it, I already broke down LaMelo's first Puma signature sneaker in a separate video. But in that video, one of my major complaints about the MB01s was the color with that Puma launched them, which, which was a basic red monochromatic color scheme. But now we're getting a look at an alternate black Hornets colorway, and the results are mucho better. Get it? Puma, Italy. Now I know Hornets inspired colorways are always a fan favorite, but in this case, the teal hits on the upper allow that graphic design to pop right off of the sneaker and really stand out on their own instead of blending in and getting lost like we saw with that red pair, which was a real shame since this graphic on the collar is actually flames, which integrates with LaMelo's rocket tattoo, which is on his leg. This colorway is just a much better showcase as to what the MB01s have to offer. And if you weren't already excited about LaMelo's first signature sneaker, this colorway might just put you over the fence. But we're going to have to wait until December before they actually release. But for now, these are one of my most anticipated sneakers of the season. And I can't wait to see all of the awesome colorways that Melo hoops in. But I'm even more excited to hoop in a pair myself because these pulled a nostalgia card, so I had no choice but to succumb to nostalgia and put these at number two on this week's list. Finally, at number one, we have Steph Curry with the debut of the Curry brand Curry 9. Under Armour and Steph officially launched the Curry 9 with a Sesame Street collaboration, which features four colorways, including these Cookie Monster inspired ones that Steph rocked in the season opener. Now, Steph did preview an alternate Elmo colorway as well with the same design elements as their Cookie Monster counterparts. But since the Cookie Monsters go so well with the Warriors gold and blue unis, I decided to officially give them the spot, even though I technically like Elmo more than Cookie Monster. As for the Curry 9, these use Under Armour's new UA Warp Tech on the upper, which features a cross hatch design and is supposed to improve foot stability and work in tandem with UA's Flow midsole which actually got rave reviews on the Curry 8. And while I'm not the biggest fan of that upper visually, they do look pretty damn comfortable. And already the launch colorways of the 9s are way more interesting than what Under Armour did with the 8s. But overall, the design here looks like it could be a playoff or elite version of its predecessor. But since the 8s were beloved for their performance, I guess Under Armour just didn't want to switch things up too much and just stuck with what they know works. I do like the personal touches here with the Cookie Monster tag on the heel, as well as the furry material on the tongue. And again, the colorways here are a lot more intriguing this time around. And of course, the splash of nostalgia always helps, as I was a huge fan of Sesame Street as a kid. The Curry 9 doesn't release until November 19th with this Sesame Street pack that also features some pretty cool apparel. But until then, I'm officially crowning them as the best sneaker worn in the NBA during week one of the 21-22 season. Be sure to come back to the channel every single Friday for new episodes of NBA Kicks, as well as more sneaker related content just like this. My name is Darren, it's Brigitte Avenue. I'll catch you guys in next week's episode, or this week's. Whatever. Friday. Be there. Peace.